Hello and welcome to Watchdog Wargaming. Today I will sh be showing you how to convert plastic bolt action US airborne uh, to British 1950 era Korean conflict Royal Marines uh, from number 41 Independent Commando. Before we go on, just so I'll, I'll cover a little bit of history about number 41 Independent Commando. Um, they were raised in August 1950. Um, under Lieutenant Colonel B.D. Drysdale, a veteran of brigade landings in World War II. Uh, this unit was raised at Buckley in Plymouth and for the majority of Marines was an all posting, although volunteers for this unit, about 200 men, were flown to Japan. Many were wearing Abentry issue civilian clothing and in the second week of September began intensive training with American equipment, including weapons, as this was the standard issue for Mar uh, Marines commandos in Korea, except for their prize Green Beret, which was distinguished them from the American troops in battle. Uh, the commando worked up for three raids um, on the North Korean East Coast against the coastal railway between Chongjing and Hangom. Uh, this line carried supplies from uh, south from China and Chongjing is only some 40 miles from the Chinese border itself. Two of these raids would be made by or made from US destroyers, another from a submarine. Um, the ship sailed from Japan and after a certain amount of uh, detailed planning, the chosen targets from a dozen possibilities were various tunnels and a bridge on the coastal railway. Um, the Marines were lowered from destroyer about 2.5 miles from the coast late on the evening of 6th of October 1950, with nothing known about the enemy defences. A scout boat from each party proceeded to the landings to check out for any def enemy defences and uh, soon B and C troops were on the beaches after crossing a sandbar and a heavily turbulent surf. The boats were hauled ashore quickly and unloaded. The Marines headed inshore to the tunnels, moving air raid refugees from the tunnels for their own safety, allowing two trains to pass. Pickets were out beyond the railway and a, um, a bazooka was sighted to destroy any further trains which came along before two tons of explosives had been placed. Um, during the raid, uh, Corporal Bab was killed and Lieutenant Pounds was burnt by some electric cables. Uh, the Marines made it back to the um, LCPR before the explosives detonated and wrecked a tunnel blocking the line for many weeks. The second tunnel and a bridge suffered the same fate, destroyed by C and D troops south of Songing, some five miles from their second landing point. Another landing from US submarine perch had been successful as well. So to convert the bolt action US airborne sprues into the uh, British 1950 Korean conflict Royal Marines, you will need the um, US airborne sprue. You will, um, and then if you've either got a spare US Army or a US Marine Corps uh, sprue, then that would be great because it gives you options for the US equipment and the weapon and the actual weapons. Um, but one thing that you will need for this, this particular conversion is the British Airborne sprue, uh, and that's predominantly for the, um, the actual um, heads with all the berries on. The reason why I'm using the um, the M43 paratrooper uniform is that it's very similar uh, to the uh, the M51 uh, uniform that came out in Korea, but also as well as most British and Commonwealth units found, is that they were very reliant on the US logistic um, supply system for um, equipment, weapons, ammunition. And um, some units were actually issued with the American M43, or some soldiers managed to acquire it through fair means and foul uh, uh, to replace their battle dress uniform. Um, so, if you say, if you look at some of the actual uniforms, it's uh, certainly at a certain part, the early part of um, the war, you've got a mixture of battle dress and, uh, and, and American issued M43 uniforms. So um, the first thing to do is that you will need to carefully um, cut away the US um, Airborne Forces uh, figures. So, um, yep, your knife, clippers, um, a 
that file or a file these are the things that you'll need uh, to, to actually do, do this um, safety first just mind your fingers um, so I've uh, I've just clipped out the actual figure from the uh, spruce so I can put that down to one side but well, like I said we'll need that later on for all the uh, the weapons because the um, Royal Marines were actually issued uh, American weapons and that was um, rifles pistols um, machine guns and even bazookas and mortars they were actually issued and, and trained on of course so um, so what you're gonna be left with so once you've taken off the figures off the sprue is you're gonna have the the paratrooper uniform now we want to keep the, the the main body we want to keep all the webbing and everything else but what we want to get rid of is actually these these baggy pockets uh, and the actual the the actual additional straps that go around the leg as well so being very very careful what you need to do is start removing these in small chunks and not so big 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 chunks because we're trying to keep as much detail as we possibly can without actually removing all the detail from the actual figure and also I find that if you put a lot of pressure into it then usually the end of the knife ends up in your, in your thumb which is something that we don't want so if you oops so we're gonna get to a point where you actually cut off the fig uh, the, the, um, the pockets and the actual straps so it should start to look quite quite smooth and then this is where we use your, your file just to smooth off the rest of it just be you know, careful that you want to keep as much detail as you can and actually keep all the folds and everything else that's actually on the figure so it is a bit of a time consuming um, process and eventually you're actually left with um, a, a blank template to work on with the actual uh, again with the boots as well you've got another option as well as these is that these are the american sort of combat highs with actually had have the the um, straps and buckles on the side what you could do is is also take these down so later on you can either paint these as putties um or the and then so the sort of like the ammo boots that we should to um, british and commonwealth troops or you can just keep as is so it just gives you various options okay so once we've done all that so that will uh, give you the the the, the, uh, so the the basic template to actually work on uh, and again whilst I'm just uh, converting these into Royal Marines at the moment with additional heads either helmets um, the ones that were in cap comforters um, you could use these actually into um, um, turn these into any British and Commonwealth uh, forces, um, as well as as well as normal Americans. Okay, so um, I will just go and tidy these up, and then we'll go on to the next process. So I've cl finally cleared off all the the remainder of the sprue and rubbed it down with my file and um, just gone over it with the, the nail file as well and so it's nice and smooth and I'm happy with it now this is personal preference um, I super glued my figure to um, a two pence piece um, I've been doing this for years so it's always the queen sort of um, head down so not super glued and um, yeah and, and just gives a little bit of weight to the actual figure so again that's personal preference you could use the actual plastic discs that come with the bolt action figures or um, the actual metal washers so now what I want to do now is actually start looking at what type of weapons um, I'm using these I'm going to fit, fit on these now I'm basing these on the same um, organizational breakdown that a British commando unit would be uh, so instead of actually having a, a Lee Enfield number four rifle I'm going to give him either a Garand or an M1 um, instead of actually having a Sten gun um, um, I'm going to give them either a, a, a Thompson or the um, M9 um, grease gun oh and so they're actually given a Webley I think there's there's on the sprues there's options for the officers to have um, pistols um, on, on the webbing as well um, because they're raiding troops they're probably going light 
Um, if I've got a spare knife on the sprue, I like to fit, uh, fit a knife on there as well and probably a small backpack or, or the actual, um, so if they have the uh, Thompson or the M9, then I'll give the, um, what I'll do is gently remove the actual sort of, um, the little round pouches off here and then, and then sort of put the actual sort of, um, uh, the magazines for the M9 or the Thompson on there as well. But this one's just going to be a normal bog standard rifleman. So I've, I've decided that I've got an M1, um, I've got a oh, M1 carbine, which I'm going to uh, fit on him. Um, and, and, and also a, one of this, so it's going to be the M1 carbine figure here with the arms already fitted. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to give it a backpack. So this has probably got explosives and stuff on that as well. Um, probably adds on some grenades and then there's some sort of, um, uh, some fighting knives here as well. So I'll put those on in a second. So with the just clip it off. Some decent clippers. That's why it's one word of advice. If you've got some decent cl clippers, you're halfway there. If you've got ones that are blunt or they're not so, you know, so not so delicate, then so it might be worthwhile just up upgrading them slightly. I'm going to trip one over with the emery board just to get rid of any sprue or flash that's actually on there. So that's the. So that's the um, the gun gun arm. I mean, again, one of these. Now the little backpacks. And what else did I say I was going to give him? Ah, fighting knife. I think these are the um, I think these are the K bars. Let's have a bit of a dry run first, just to see if it all fits on there. Yeah, that's that's fine. And actually, on the back of these figures, you've actually they've already got the the straps on there. So just by putting a small pack on there, you could actually get away by using a British back, uh, small pack as well, which would be uh, just a unique. To, would make the figure a little bit more unique. And then you've got the, not, well, it's not the commando knife, but the, that's the uh, K bar on the fighter knife. So, um, what I'll do is I'll quickly super glue that. Those so super glue. Um, you can either use normal sort of um, normal glue, or you can use uh, uh, extra thin. This is the one I normally use, but it's um, again, if you put too much pressure on it, you get lots coming out the end. So uh, I'm trying to be a bit more delicate with these ones. So what I'll do now is, as whilst I wait for that figure to dry, is to take off um, one of the actual power trooper heads and have to do that really, really carefully because, it, um, because these are, the sprues are right on the bottom of the chin. So I'll take that off and then put that to one side. Now, because they're, they've actually got the, the Airborne Forces cat badge, is that if we're very, very delicate, delicate, we can actually just remove the actual wings off it slightly and keep the center bit, which we can use as the Royal Marine cat badge. Again, it takes a little bit of time, and so sort of, um, once it's cleared up, it'll, it'll be you can use it as a Royal Marines cap badge. Now, this this bit's next fiddly you now because the Royal Marine heads are slightly a bit smaller, so these heads are slightly a bit smaller than the U.S. Airborne figures. So it's a bit of a faff. It's a bit of a faff, but what I what I do. Is, he says
And now technical hitch here. Glue's not opening properly. Now I'm going to use my normal poly cement on this one because I want a little bit, a little bit more glue than I would normally would just to give it a bit more um, to fill some of the actual. There we are. Probably a little bit more than I would normally normally use, but that's this is what I want to actually to do. Now let's get the head that I prepared earlier. Now this should be so. Yeah, that's the one. And then what I want to do is try and get the head a little bit higher than it's normally than it was sitting in there. Put the head into a um, into a shooting position. So as you can see, there we are. So um, if it is if, if the gap's too big, then you can always use a little bit of green stuff and put a uh, make, do a face veil or something like that. But if it's uh, if you put just a bit too much glue in there and then rest the helmet sorry rest the helmet rest the head on top of it it'll actually give you uh, more more of a neck um, so um, what I did earlier on was um, so it's got the weapon on the M1 carbine on there it's got a small pack it's got um, I thought I gave him a water bottle and he's got his fighting knife so that is that is the basic figure so you've got, got um, a Royal Marine who's wearing American uniform, American kit and equipment, uh, but he's kept his coveted green berry. So like I said, it's a pretty simple and fast way of converting things. Um, and it's probably able to use spare sprues or figures that you've actually got. Um, so yeah, basing as well. You just base it how you want it. Um, what I'll do is I'll um, go on to the next bit where I've uh, got one or two that I've actually already uh, painted, not completely finished, but uh, as, uh, you can see what I mean by uh, what's actually uh, you can actually do with these. Right, hang on. Do you, here we go. So what I'll do is I'll um, at this point I'll put up some uh, p original pictures so you can able to sort of see what I was the result I'm trying to get based on these pictures and hopefully it's um, it's something that um, looks similar and uh, something you can use on the actual war gaming table. So the first figure this is the um, says a uh, uh, Nencio armed with um, a Thompson. Um, like I said, I've given him the Thompson magazines, uh, and he's got a bit of additional kit on the kit and equipment on the back. And then we go on to the um, Marine with uh, M1 carbine. Um, again, he's got uh, pretty much as I did the other one. He's got a, um, a water bottle and a fighting knife on the on, on the side. He's got his Garand, and this one's got a bit of, he's got the actual backpack and everything else, so he's probably uh, carrying explosives or other demo charges. And then another, finally we've got another Royal Marine. Uh, and you can see it's a good example of the M41 unit, uh, uniform, which is very similar to the actual later one. In fact, it's very similar to patterns up until um, the British Army started going into camouflage uniforms. So hopefully that's given you food food for thought for um, using some of your spare kit and equipment, spare sprues that you've got for uh, and, uh, for raiding parties, um, especially uh, for use in the Korean conflict. These are not finished. But, uh, I've got a lot to, to do with the basing on it. I used the Mastro granite uh, on these basings, so they'll be they'll be grassed and turfed and everything else. And I'll probably um, highlight the actual figures a little bit more. Um, but um, and certainly go over the faces. But it's a start, and hopefully it's given you sort of some uh, food for thought and uh, something to um, have a go at yourself. Well, that's that's all from me. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. And I will uh, catch you next time on Watchdog Wargaming. Um <laughs>